It's 10 minutes to two and we're joining up with Mark Stafford from the Sports Desk live in Petone. Staff, great to see you once again on the channel and I'm just wondering when you sports bookies ever get a chance to sleep following all these games? No sleep for us, Jess. Well, it's sort of between the hours of about four in the morning and six in the morning. That, that, that's generally it. No, we, that's the beauty of my sky, Jess. We can watch things when we can fit it into our schedule, but there is so much to keep up with and so much sporting information can get um, sort of stale quite quickly. So luckily there's more than just one or two of us. Absolutely no rest for the wicked or so they say. We're going to start this afternoon, Stafford, looking at the PGA, the Players' Championship, and the tournament winner option here, 6-2-8. Uh, and Tiger Woods leading the charge, although I suppose the question would be, what is his mind frame like? I understand he hasn't won anything major in the last 19 months. Yeah, his mind's been like scrambled eggs for pretty much two years. He, I, you know, I, I guess I can understand why he's the favourite because at the top of his game, if everyone played at the top of their game, he would win it. But um, and he's he's been the best backed as well, and that's been the biggest surprising thing to me. He hit his first golf ball for for a month on Tuesday, so two days ago or two days before the tournament. Um, he's got to be rusty. He's got to be got to have ring rust, as they say. He's probably been putting in a lot of work, but. As you mentioned, his mind's no good. He's had a crook knee as well, and he's going into a course that's very challenging against one of the best fields of the season. So pretty tough for him, but just equally tough, Jess, as trying to find a winner. You can cast your eyes down all of these names and names like with players in form, I guess there's Lucas Glover, Porig Harrington, uh, Adam Scott. Uh, ben Crane is probably one of the best performed. He's on the first page. I think he's about $22 to win the tournament. Last three years he's been fourth, fifth and sixth. So he has been the best performed. You can see there in the top five he's paying $4.50. And I think two of those last three years he was leading after the first round as well. So Ben Crane might be a, a good bit of value. Nick Watney's in tremendous form. Martin Keimer either is or currently or, or was recently the world number one as well. Uh, Jim Furyk's in pretty good. Nick Luke Donald's in wonderful form. So nice, even, balanced type of tournament, Jess. Uh, if I'm picking one and I'm in a, and I'm a golf picking competition every week, uh, I've gone for Adam Scott just because I think no one else will pick him and I think he'll be alright. <laughs> That's pretty good logic as well and as you mentioned uh, pretty wide open field with Tiger, the favourite, 10 previous winners uh, in that tournament winner and top 5 finish options on the website. We're having a look at the FA Cup now, looking to football, Manchester City uh, versus Stoke City and a lot rests on the shoulder of both these team staff. There's uh, been a long time between drinks for both of them. Yeah, there has, and um, you'll see there 142.80. There's no draw option there, so if you're taking a bet into this one, this is just the winner of the cup. That will include any extra time or penalties that are required. So that's just a straight head-to-head, -head, like you're used to for rugby and rugby league. Um, it eliminates the draw. So if it's a draw after 90 minutes, um, your bet will carry on. If you want to take the draw option, that that's that's available as well. But uh, interesting matchup, the two city sides, Jess. I think that since the fourth round, uh, Manchester City had to go into a playoff or a, or a replay, if you like, of their fourth round. Since then, they've scored 10 goals for and none against in their lead up to the, to the final. And they beat uh, Man, Man United in their semi. Stoke, since the fourth round, have got 11 goals for and five conceded. They beat Bolton 5 0 in their semi final. Uh, the last five times, I'm statting it up a big time now, the last five times these two teams have played, four of them have finished one all. So Man City don't hold any massive um, fear, I guess, for Stoke, but it is the FA Cup final. Man United are used to the bigger stage more than Stoke, I think. They're in great nick themselves, Man City. They've just confirmed themselves in the Champions League for next season. But Stoke's most recent solid scalp was Arsenal, beating them 2-1. In, in the weekend I think it was so really not too much in this one Jess and um, for value punters and I know there's plenty out there they're taking stoke and seeing it as a realistic chance. Yeah and uh, hopefully the uh, tempers will be well and truly kept under hold Man City versus Stoke City in the FA Cup and uh, that option available and more as you saw you can see them once again at tab.co.nz that's a look at the feature football for the weekend moving now to the NRL and we're going to have a look at four games uh, for round 10 Bulldogs versus the uh, Dragons and uh, the Dragons at 145, and the Bulldogs in after, after a bye staff after losing to the Broncos last time up. 
Yeah, and the the dragons, just everyone loves them. As soon as we open up the book with the dragons, everyone jumps on. And I think there were many thousands of dollars just before I came in here. There's many thousands of dollars being put on them already, and I think only eighty dollars on the bulldogs. Even though the bulldogs are at home, but St George are just such a complete side. Um, the right players in the right areas. They're favourites of our punters, and this week looks like no change. The, the dogs have been hot and cold, and against St George, you can't afford to be that. If you're going to threaten them, you've got to be really good. And as I say, even with the home advantage, the Bulldogs, no one seems to want to take them. Fair enough, too. The uh, Dragons have quite a few changes to their lineup as well for that meet, uh, that match as well. South versus the Tigers, and uh, the Tigers staff been in the news quite a bit recently with uh, a salary breach as well. Yeah, I just caught up with that myself, 140 odd thousand dollars involving a handful of players. Uh, very easy to breach as well and there's a rumour going around that their next broadcasting deal is going to net them all sorts of money in the, and there's thoughts that that money will increase the salary cap for the teams because it's, it's becoming so inviting for these teams to go, or the, these top players to go offshore and chase the bigger money. You can see there $1.33 on Wests, $3.10 on Souths who, who as well have been hit by injury. Uh, West Tigers at, at that 133. Similar pattern to the St George Bulldogs game, Just everyone is into Wests. Everyone's into Wests, minus 8.5 as well. They're seeing a nice big win once again for the away team. Not, not a hugely common thing in the NRL, but when Souths are as badly affected as they are, they haven't got a, you know, a good deep squad of talent. So once they get a few of their front liners out, uh, they're a much easier proposition. So the punters and the bookmakers both thinking West should uh, account to the Rabbitohs quite comfortably. Most of New Zealand will have their eyes peeled on the Warriors match this weekend. They're versing the Newcastle Knights and uh, the Warriors have opted to stay in Aussie staff for a week-long camp. Yeah, I think that's a great idea too, Jess. Um, <clears throat> While they would have been disappointed with the Test match, I think their game a couple of days later against Gold Coast has brought them all sorts of confidence and we certainly have seen some money for them uh, early days anyway. Uh, interesting to see too, they've stuck with the, the Mannering-Lewis combination out there in the centres, both probably better in the second row or would see themselves as second rowers, but the, the transition, the transformation of the Warriors seems to have come about with a few of these uh, personnel changes and Simon Mannering in particular out there wide seems to be doing such a great job defensively. Manu Vatavai was welcomed back for the Warriors last weekend and went great guns so I'm liking the way the Warriors are going, they're on a good momentum roll. Newcastle, yeah they're always tough at home, they are the slightest of favourites so it could be a 12 and under, it should be a 12 and under either side but um, I'm going to lean towards the Warriors just basically because of momentum.